What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Team Runner here, and welcome back to another video. Now, as I embark on my next speed block of training over the next two or three months, I thought it would be a good idea to go through with you guys my current running shoe rotation. So officially I'm starting my next training block as of next week so just having a couple of weeks after Cardiff half to kind of settle things back down and slowly start to rev the engine ready to go again uh, as of next week. I haven't done a running shoe rotation update for a while and I thought what I would do is go through with you guys my favourites at the moment for my easy running, my moderate running, my speed work and my long runs. So I thought I'd cover all of that today and share with you how I'm going to be using them all and uh, their strengths and weaknesses. If you're excited for that today guys make sure you give this video a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content will start with the Easy Run Shoe. So I'm really surprising myself with how much I'm actually enjoying the 880 version 12 from New Balance. Just kind of reminding me why I missed running in New Balance. They're just a good brand, a shoe that works for me. Now this is the first time that I've ever jumped into the 880 lineup. Despite the weight, heaviness, 410 grams I think it was or somewhere around there just over 14 ounces I have to say it's a shoe that doesn't quite feel the weight that it is it's comfy it does the job and it's just getting me from A to B and I'm really actually quite enjoying it the more I run it I think I've got four runs in it now I've got the Nova Blast to 500 miles put that now to one side and I'm now soaking up the easy miles in this thing and actually now taking it out onto the dry trails uh, where I do most of my running now and will be for this next training block uh, I'm finding it even more comfy it's just super super nice obviously when it comes to the height of summer this thing is gonna get a little bit hot we're talking a lot of comfort a lot of cushioning and a relatively thick upper there but on the whole at the moment as it currently stands in this climate it is just doing really really well so actually as I said surprise myself with how much I'm enjoying it but I am and I'm kind of feeling like the more I run in this thing the more I'm going to start to break it in so yep albeit it's not an overblast it hasn't quite got that, got that bouncy magic that that has I have to say that I feel like I'm onto a little bit of a winner with this shoe and shifting our attention over to the endorphin speed to run shield version this is my current go-to moderate day shoe now I've said in a video when I got to 100 miles and I gave you a long-term review of this thing that I kind of feel like it doesn't quite have the magic that that speed one had for me I don't know what it is it just doesn't feel quite the same obviously it's lighter than the v1 which is baffling to me because obviously the upper is way thicker and heavier than what it is on the v1 but it's just a shoe that didn't quite work too well for me but it has now found its sweet spot over the last 50 60 miles I think I'm up to around 170 ish in this thing now it really has become my go-to moderate shoe because it just fits that bill of being lightweight uh, runs fast feels smooth the transition in this shoe is wonderful it just doesn't quite have that pop that I was using the speed ones for in workouts and things I just don't feel like I get that in this version of the shoe I don't know what it is I explained all of that in my long-term review and I'm not going to go into that now but what I do find is it just sits in that perfect sweet spot for moderate running so I've got plenty of workout shoes that I've used for moderate running in the past um, because I like something a little bit not uh, I like something a little bit lighter and nippier for moderate runs I don't want to run in something like the New Balance it's just feels a bit too heavy a bit too cumbersome to get going in that but I find this to be kind of that perfect I'm not going to use it for a workout but I'm also not going to use it uh, for anything else that moderate pace just seems to be this sweet spot I'm going to come on to another use of the shoe later in the video but for the moment the moderate run is kind of uh, being soaked up by this thing now this is the one that I'm really really excited about the streak fly something that has just come into my rotation this year and absolutely blown me away with how good it is for speed work I've said time and time again done workout videos and all of that stuff around this shoe for me in terms of racing because the question gets asked all the time I don't think it's comparable to something like the next percent or the alpha fly like I would still race in the next percent and alpha fly over this thing despite it being marketed as a racing shoe but when it comes to workouts I've not quite 
haven't found a shoe better than this. I kind of feel like it's the turbo, but, but better. Um, and every other speed workout shoe that I have or shoe geared up for speed has just taken a back seat. This thing is nearly on 100 miles um, already. I had also, or I would be over 100 miles if it wasn't for the other colorway I have of this that I took out just because I wanted to give that one a go as well. Um, but I think, I can't remember what I am at the moment, I think like 75, 80, 85 miles. So it's going really, really strong. Now for me personally, this fits the bill for speed work in terms of it's lightweight, it's poppy, it's got that mid foot shank. I've gone over this before, I won't bore you with the details. Imagine a carbon plate but cut the front and the end off so it covers up to about where my fingers are here and it just shores up the midsole because it is zoom x it is nice and soft and i do find like i pronate i over pronate in this thing a, a bit but unlike the rebel where a uh, rebel v2 where i was over pronating too much and my ankles are rolling in it was really hurting the midfoot shank in this thing just holds steady enough for me not to over pronate too much and cause any issues in and around that post tib area ankle where i sometimes get soreness from doing that in certain shoes it's got that perfect sweet spot. Everything about this shoe I love. I feel quick, I feel fast, I feel light, I feel nimble. And for someone who's six foot six, that's quite a challenging thing to feel. The other thing that's really surprised me about this shoe is I've taken it out onto the light trails. Um, and when I say light trails, all right, we're not talking rocks, we're not talking gravel. It really is just light, very dusty, flat, packed out trails. And I've done a couple of uh, workouts on there now in them. And the grip on this thing is enough to feel really confident and secure on those trails. This sort of rubber on the outsole of the forefoot just feels really, really good. I feel so confident when I'm running on them. That last workout I did, I just felt like I was absolutely shifting and it was such a good feeling. So this thing and then the other colorway when this kind of sort of dies a death at whatever point it might get retired is gonna get a heck of a lot of use over the next few weeks. And finally, on to the long run shoe of this block. It's gonna be half and half. It's gonna be a little bit Hyperion Tempo, a little bit Endorphin Speed 2 Run Shield. Reason being, a lot of my uh, long runs at the moment are gonna be around moderate pace. That's kind of gonna be the effort uh, that I wanna be putting in. There'll be a little bit of tempo stuff thrown in, probably maybe half marathon pace at best, but maybe more so around marathon pace. Haven't quite mapped out the plan, but that's usually during the speed block, the type of long runs that I like to do. That's where I get some of that quality work done. And that means that this thing will come into play because I don't want to get this thing too much use before the London Marathon training block. That's the reason why I bought this thing again, because I wanted to use it for those longer workouts and long runs leading into London. And if I'm not careful, this thing will have well in excess of 200 miles in before I even get to the London block. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of alternating, probably gonna go for this a little bit more, but obviously bearing in mind, I just did a 22 mile long run on the weekend to break this thing in. And already, as I said, 22 miles in the bank. Now, a lot of my long runs are gonna be in and around the 18 to 20 mile mark. So this thing over five runs could easily hit the 100 mile mark. And that's where I have to be really, really careful Careful. So as much as I want this one to be number one when it comes to the long run, I am going to be splitting the miles. This thing, sadly, as I said, it's not the most inspiring for me at the moment, but it does feel like that moderate running pace is the sweet spot. And when I rev it up and try and go marathon pace, it still feels relatively good. I just find that when I try and go too much quicker in it, it just feels a bit flat and a bit dull. Everything that the version one didn't feel, but this will do the job in there. So these two things are going to split the long runs over the next few weeks. So that's my current running shoe rotation for the next, well, for the foreseeable future, for the next two, three, four weeks at least. There'll be more running shoes coming in uh, for testing, but I'm being a little bit careful as to where I spend my money at the moment. I've got some good shoes in my rotation. I want to start putting some miles in them. And obviously, as much as I'd love to get some of these great new shoes, I've seen the OnCloud Monster come out. I've seen the Mac 4 Supersonic, uh, the Velocity Nitro 2 from Puma. Really wanted that one, uh, but they're only going up to size 12. That is one that I was going to buy, but Sadly, they're not doing my size. The Nimbus 24, but again, a lot of these shoes are costing a fair bit of money at the moment, and I'm just trying to be a little bit more wise as to where I spend my money. First and foremost, I'm a runner, and I want to get better at running, and I love running. That's my that's my thing. YouTube is just such good fun, but I've got to not fall into the habit of buying shoes just for the sake of views. I've got to buy shoes that are actually going to work for me 
in my rotation. So that's kind of my thinking at the moment. So at least for the next two, three, four weeks, this is gonna be in my rotation. More will come in at some point and I'll be mixing things up. But at the moment, I feel like I've got a really good sort of foundation of shoes at the moment to take me forward into the speed block. That being said, I'd love to hear what your current running shoe rotation is because you know us runners, they change probably month on month, maybe every two or three months, we're gonna get some new shoes in. Let me know what you're running at the moment, what your favorite is. And if you have a rotation like mine, you've got easy day shoes, moderate shoes, long run shoes, all of that stuff. Let me know what your current April 2022 setup is. It'd be great to get that conversation going and great to hear from you. If you enjoyed today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.